What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show you one way you can composite in some reflections of your CG elements onto reflective surfaces in your live action shots. Now there are lots of different ways to do this, but I found that this technique is a nice balance between physically accurate reflections and a fairly simple and streamlined workflow for most basic visual effect shots. Anyways guys, this is the shot we're going to be adding a reflection of our CG element here. It's from our recently uploaded grass dancing humanoid video. So we just have our CG element here. And so far, I'll go through the scenes before we actually get into the reflective uh, part of this tutorial. But this will be our starting point. And of course, you can follow along with your own project. But I'll just show you what we have so far in this composite. Pretty simple setup here. We have our movie clip and then we've overlaid first our shadow catcher, which is in one view layer. So you can see our shadow right here and go ahead and turn these off so you can see our element without the shadow. There you go. And so we've added in our shadow here, added some blur to the shadow with these nodes. And finally, the second input into our node tree is our actual CG character here. And I've added some ambient occlusion to it, added a little transform node to bring our character down closer to the floor, done some color correction here, and added some blur to it to match the element to our live action shot. Uh, and uh, yeah, essentially that is it to create this result. And there is a lot more we could do here, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to try to keep it simple and straightforward and just get into creating the reflection here. So as you can see, you know, it's looking pretty nicely integrated here. Um, you can see that we're getting some reflection reflectivity of our live action shot on this floor. So we should also want to get some reflectivity of our CG element here. So as usual, one of the main questions we ask in CG compositing is how do we recreate the data of the live action shot inside of the computer so that we can integrate our CG elements into the environment. All right, so how do we get the data necessary to create a reflection of our character here? Let's go back to our layout mode. And what we want to do is recreate the floor of our live action shot inside of our computer on a new view layer and then use a reflective material on that floor recreation and then render out that reflection specifically. Don't worry too much about what we have in my scene right now. Really the only thing you'll need to apply this concept is your character on its own separate collection and then we'll add the plane here in a second. So don't worry too much about these other collections here. I'll tell you what they are just really quick. I just have our environment projection and this is just for some environmental lighting similar kind of to an HDRI but I've just enabled it as indirect only so it doesn't show up and then I have a ground shadow catcher which we've used to render out our shadow and then finally our grass character is in this collection right here. So let's go ahead and add a new view layer for our scene. So I'll click right here, add new, and I want to call this one ground reflection. I'll call it character reflection actually. And we're not going to need our shadow catcher in this specific view layer, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. And I'll just hide our environment projection here so we have a cleaner viewport. So now we just have our element in the scene here. So let's create a plane to render out the reflection. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A. I'll add a plane. And I'll just scale this up and we'll just make this like our floor in our live action shot. And of course, depending on your shot, you may have to be more precise and line it up to the geometry of your scene a bit more accurately, but this should be pretty good since I have our character here. It's a good reference for how we can place this. So something like this is pretty good. And I'll just relabel our plane here, reflective ground. And I'll select our ground here. I'll press M, move it to a new collection and we'll call it ground reflection. So now we have our ground reflection collection and now let's select our reflective ground and we will view our scene here through our camera. And I'll go ahead and go to rendered view and you'll see that right now we just have this ground plane with its default diffuse material but what we want to do is render out some reflections. So in order to do that we can go to our materials properties tab, add a new material and we want to create some kind of reflective material that matches generally our live action floor here. Now you may want to be more precise with it with uh, bump maps and such but for the sake of this example I think we can get away with just a very basic glossy material. So I'll add a glossy shader and then I will bring down the roughness here, maybe something like 0 0.086. And you can see we're getting some reflections of our HDRI that we have lighting our scene as well, but don't worry too much about that because we're actually going to render out some different lighting passes that allow us to isolate just the uh, element being reflected here. So go ahead, I'm gonna make this a little less rough, maybe 
zero four. So this right here is just our environmental lighting. And if we actually turn on our environment projection here, which is our little half cylinder in our background that we projected our live action shot onto for realistic lighting, you'll see that we have some realistic reflections here as well. And now aside from adjusting the roughness and perhaps you know the general color of our glossy floor here, we're getting a lot closer to being able to extract this data and composite it into our shot. One thing we do want to do for this view layer since it's just a reflection, we want anything that we don't want to show up in this render to be enabled as indirect only. So for example, our grass character here should be indirect only. And now you can see that this specific view layer is not going to render out our character itself, but that character will be indirectly reflected into our reflective ground material. So this is the general concept here. Everything else that you don't want to be rendered on this view layer should be indirect only. So I'll do the same thing for our environment indirect projection. And now we just have our live action shot here and we're getting that reflection of our camera projection in our ground plane here. And now what we want to do is isolate the reflections on our floor even further. So what I like to do in order to figure out what lighting paths I want to isolate in our compositor and use is I'll just go up here and under our render paths drop down menu here, render and render preview mode, you can actually take a look at the different lighting passes available to you. So I know that the data necessary to isolate this reflection in our view layer is likely either glossy direct or glossy indirect. So I'll go ahead and try out glossy direct first. And you can see that these are the direct reflections of our background projection. So that's not the one we need. We're not getting the best reflection of our grass character. So now I just might try glossy indirect. And now you can see this is exactly what we want. We have a nice reflection of our grass character here, but just isolated by itself. So glossy indirect is going to be the pass that we want to export on this view layer. So in order to do that, we can go to our view layer properties tab here, scroll down and click on glossy indirect. And now that we have isolated the data that we want, in addition to adding this reflective ground material, we can go to render and render image and we can get into compositing that reflective data into our actual shot. All right, so we have rendered out our data. Now let's get into the compositing process once more. So I'll go ahead and close our render view here and go to our compositing tab. And we want to add the reflection of our character just after our shadow pass, but before our actual character is overlaid on top of our footage. So I will press Shift A, we'll add an input, render layers, and I will select our reflection render layer, our character reflection right here. You can see that if I press Shift A and go to Output Viewer, we can export our glossy indirect and take a look at it here. We have this nice glossy indirect pass that we can overlay and create a nice reflection with. So I'll press Shift A, we'll add a color mix node, add this to our node tree, and we want to add our glossy indirect to this bottom mix node input. And now you can see we have a nice little reflection going on here, but we do want to switch our blend mode to instead of mix, we want to switch it to add, or you can also use screen, but I found that add works pretty well a lot of the time. And now you can see already we're getting a nice little reflection. We are getting some sampling issues, but what we can do in order to solve that is just add a little bit of blur because I think the reflection, as you can see from the live action shot, there's not the cleanest reflection on this floor already. So a little bit of blur is not going to hurt us. So I'll press shift A, add a filter, blur, add this right here. I'll make it bokeh blur, increase the X and Y values a bit, maybe four and four. And already this is blending in pretty nicely. I might increase it a little bit more on the Y axis. That's looking pretty good. I might uh, maybe bring down the brightness of our reflection a little bit. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a color, RGB curves, just bring down the general levels here. And there we go, I think that's looking pretty good. That's compositing nicely into our scene. There are some other things we could do here. Obviously, we uh, would want to mask out this portion of this reflection that we've added since the floor stops at that point. You can also play around with the factor setting here to get a little bit more subtle reflection perhaps. But this is the general concept here, guys. This is how you can very simply create and add a reflection of your CG element into your live action shot. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content and I'll see you next time.